Hi, everybody. I am Tess Parker, the Director of Programs for the Anthroposophical Society in America, and I'm here with Mary Stewart Adams, star lore historian. Hi, Mary. How are you today? <laughs> Tess, how are you? Glad to be here. Doing well. We both had some snow and sleet in our respective areas, but yeah, yeah. down now this the winter storms are coming and reminding us of the importance to kind of go within, go inward, kind of come to those quiet places inside and indoors yeah. to find the light within. And we are approaching the holy nights. Mm -hmm. So it's a big time for us um, anthroposophists to reflect and be with the year. This you know, encountering the year, both looking backwards and looking forwards. And I think there's a lot of different ways to do it. And I wanted to talk with you to just get some insights and reflect and learn. And how, how is the best way to do the Holy Nights? Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's a, that's a big question because it's such a rich experience in the cycle of the year for humanity, right? And and so many of us on a path of spiritual science do take this time as a, a natural retreat, um, at least in the Northern Hemisphere, because we're having this in-breath and this contemplation of the earth in its celestial environment. And then who are we as human beings on the earth? How can we enter into that experience of earth, which I love this quote from Rudolf Steiner, that the earth is a being that meditates on the occurrences of the stars. And then further that this is something that happens most specifically at the darkest time of the year. So when we come to the winter solstice, just this lovely imagination of the earth having breathed in and then looking out toward the starry fields, you know, just, just having this sense that from within the self contemplating my place in space. And then as a human being on the earth, thinking about what is it that has happened in the course of the year that's now completing? And then how do I prepare in my soul for what I can't fully know, but that I can anticipate in the year ahead. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. we divide our year into 12 months, even though the word month comes from moon and we oftentimes will have 13 lunar cycles in one solar year. Uh, we can yeah. measure this solar year um, in the Gregorian calendar that we use. We have these 12 months that are, um, you know, just, we, I think we talked about this before, things that come in 12s. Mm -hmm. Like what could I apply to that, that experience of 12-foldness, which points to space? Mm -hmm. So 12 months, 12 regions of the zodiac. Um, there are 12 apostles anywhere that we could find 12. Could mm -hmm. be one of the ways to build a contemplation, both mm -hmm. looking back into the year behind, kind of like a um, how you would do the practice of the, the rukshaw at the end of the day, where you just review the day. This is a sacred time for reviewing the entire year step by step, and then anticipating. I think of the the review as the thing I like to do in the evening when the sun is setting. Mm -hmm. Set aside time to look back, kind of pretty systematically. And then in the morning when I awaken to try to take hold of the thought or the idea or out of that clarity of the dawn, look forward to the future. Mm -hmm. And so in order to, for me to take, uh, I don't want to say take advantage of it, but to make best use of that kind of energy, it helps to say to myself ahead of time, here's how I'm going to do this. So if I'm going to review as the sun is moving through the different regions of the zodiac, then I've got to figure out which sign will I start with? And am I going to go forward through the year? Am I going to go backward through the year? Like what, what does that look like? Right. And, and there's not one way to do it. There is so not my one question way. itself was faulty. The, there is no best way. There's no but, best way. But you're putting to, you're putting forth a real kind of um, a, a, a structure of, of reviewing, of yeah. taking the time. And, and it's, as I understand, it's at the time when the sun is setting to really take that moment, the sun is setting for that day to that's the, like a moment to begin the review for that. 
I mean, I think it again, uh, yes, it can be an ideal time. And it also depends on the individual that's doing it. When mm-hmm. is the best time in the cycle of my day? Right. Stop and, and do this kind of contemplation. And I think it's if we approach it as a will exercise where we say to ourselves, okay, for 12 days and 13 nights, beginning with the Christmas Eve and going toward Epiphany, I'm going to do a daily practice. Mm-hmm. And that daily practice is going to be informed by what I have brought as like golden seeds out of the year past that I'm going to prepare for cultivation and germination in the year ahead. Mm. One of the ways Rudolf Steiner described this is that there are spiritual fruits ripening in every year. But if we don't build a container to receive them, Mm. these fruits will drop onto the earth and rot. So taking this time, these 12 days and these 13 nights at this time, to really kind of like weave this basket to receive these fruits coming out of what were my experiences in the year past and how can those weave into what's coming and then to pay attention to the dreams and to get out and experience the sky what's rising what's setting what stars can i see Um, the mood of the christmas time is different and what is it that brings that difference um, you know, what occurred around the feast days? How did I celebrate my birthday? What age will I be next year? I mean, just these kind of basic questions mm. about the things that we know. Like, I know I, I can figure out when the date of Easter will be or when the Perseid meteor shower is going to happen. And I can make a time to anticipate that. Yeah. Yeah. So it can land in my life. Yeah, it reminds me of being, you know, a farmer and reflecting on how did the season go and, and then kind of look planting those and then bringing the seeds forth in a way. Right. And encoding And what will enhance there. the fertility? What do I need yeah. to do for, for a healthy yield? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I like that bringing, building that basket because that basket could be, it could take the form of what each individual really wants, you know, it could be art it could be working with color and pastels right. it could be poetry it could be reflection dream work um mm-hmm. you know sacred be conversation. I, yeah i'd like yeah. to do a hand roll a beeswax candle each day right. and what i love about that is that if i'm doing that when i'm contemplating say aries for instance and i roll a candle and i'm thinking about the sun moving through the region of aries in 2023 the next day i do taurus the next day gemini And then what I do is I wrap them up in tissue and then I keep them so that then when the sun gets to Aries, that's the candle that I have for my, that I use for my contemplation and my prayer. I prepared it during the holy nights to to receive the light next year that I anticipated Mm. it. And so anything that can kind of touch it that way, like you said, like you could make a calendar. Mm -hmm. So I could say, all right, I'm going to begin with April because it's when Easter happens. This is the the beginning of the spiritual new year. So the first day of Christmas, I would make a calendar for April. I might make it the color of Aries, which would be this red. Um, And I will, you know, I like to hand make calendars because then in a certain way, I've touched every single day of the coming year. Wow, I love that. Yeah. And that might seem kind of intense, but if you set yourself up ahead of time, like I've got my paper, I've got my mm-hmm. watercolors, I've got my colored pencils, I've got my working space, and I make a, a contract with myself to say, okay, at 10 a.m. each day, I'm going to spend this amount of time making this calendar. Right. And I have found for myself over the you know couple of decades of doing this that if I'm not, if I'm not that specific about it, it gets easy to i just I'll catch up I right. to go off and then not do it and I think the important thing in that is to not judge yourself it's like yeah it's just to observe right. yourself oh look look how far right. I could go <laughs> right and often those years where it's, you know you can also the gesture in which you come into the holy nights can also feel part of the year ahead or part of the year past in a way too right it has that mood yeah. and I think it's it's you know, that seven days in particular from Christmas Eve to New Year's Eve, it really kind of held really sacredly. Once we get to New Year's Day to Epiphany, 
it's as though being drawn back into the world. Yes, I always feel that too. Yeah, yeah. and so this kind of uh, five and set, you know, we get the seven days from New Year's Eve to Christmas Eve, and then the five remaining days from New Year's Day to Epiphany. So it's kind of a, um, you know, thinking about that division in time as well. And the way I was first taught the Holy Nights from Tamara Slayton in the 1990s, how to observe it was that it's not just a straight through linear contemplation. Mm. Go from the first Holy Night, Christmas Eve, to the seventh Holy Night, which is December 30th. Mm -hmm. The eighth Holy Night is January 1st to the 2nd. Mm -hmm. New Year's Eve is the 13th hidden Holy Night. It doesn't happen at the end. And it's not exactly in the middle, but it's New Year's Eve, which is coming after the seventh night. Right. So it's like stepping back from the sequence of things to get an overall view. And this really challenges us to get out of the just our day wake consciousness of things starting in one place and moving through their middle and coming to an end, but that everything doesn't move in one direction. Mm. And so is I that love kind of connected to this lunar picture of the, you know, there being kind of a, a 13th lunar cycle within the 12 calendar year? It could be, it could be. I think of it also though, as the like, Rudolf Steiner says this really remarkable thing about how when we move beyond a certain place, I mean, perhaps you could say even beyond the moon sphere, that time in the spiritual move, spiritual world moves from the end back to the beginning. And so each day we've got the sun rising in the east, it goes overhead, it sets in the west, and that's kind of a, a mm. certain direction. But then when we go to sleep at night, we lay our bodies down on the earth. The earth is turning from the west back to the east. So the light of the sun went east to west, and then the earth goes west to east. So mm, we're yeah. back and forth yes. and back and forth. <laughs> and so in the in the during the holy nights time, it's like getting a, a sense of that. I'm going to look back, and then I'm going to look forward, then I'm going to look back, and then I and in the midst I'm going to stop that mm. process. And, and imagine the heights mm. but from the depths. It's right. Just really wow. Like, yeah. yeah. That's beautiful. Mm. That, that what you're doing too, feels like this weaving too. I can feel this like yeah. weaving something back and bringing it forward. And I love, yeah, that's beautiful. Yeah. The, all the, the movement within it. And then I also, um, you know, thinking about how, like, what is it that, that we're celebrating? We're celebrating a sacred birth. And we're not always, all of us, we're not going to give birth on the, the holy night. But to think in the cycle of, of the year in this nine-month rhythm, which is the amount of time it takes for a human gestation. So going back to March. Right. And this is when in the Christian calendar, we have the Feast of the Annunciation. And so looking back at the beginning of what was always traditionally the spiritual new year, or even in the calendar of the soul, it begins with Easter. Mm -hmm. so something is announcing itself there that year after year, when we start to look at it, you can start to sense that something presents itself that belongs to this being of the year or the year God that Rudolf Steiner talks about. And that it, it's developing through the course and the cycle of the year. And we are to learn to think with and to live with this being of the year. And so that then when we come to solstice time and then Christmas and into these holy nights, it's as though we can, enough time has passed where we can see what was conceived, what announced itself that then I conceived and, and brought through the, the full out breath with the solar, uh, excuse me, the earth forces at the summer solstice, and then started to breathe in, gathering in as harvest. And now this is what I have to offer, something that comes to birth in me. Mm -hmm. And then nine months from now, it will yeah. be memories. And that feels so important to, to that time of reflecting what that was is so much yeah, of building that self-awareness and building that uh, ability or capacity for these, for more connections to kind of be drawn forth and in, in the, you know, yeah. it just kind of makes 
once it kind of just enriches one's whole life to to do this reflecting and anticipating process this this holy nights interval which is this time outside time in a way um yeah and i and it's like a gift to the self and realizing and i'm i'm fond of saying this but but my life is the research subject mm -hmm. not because it's mine mm -hmm. but because I'm inhabiting this body and it's from here that I can look into the world and have encounter up close and personal with what it is to be a human being. And of course, there are certain um, events that are going to happen and unique to the individual that is doing this kind of work and research. But this opportunity for reflection comes toward all of us at the same time of the year. The earth is kind of carrying us through this cycle and we get this opportunity really to reflect and anticipate and yes. and have that kind of oh, just that communion yes yeah. and feeling that perhaps you know there's more more messages to be received at this time it's just I remember I always feel that when I wake up in the morning it might be my intention though it might just be bringing that intention <laughs> to the work but I find that I I get these you know, kind of prophetic dreams or mm. words that emerge in the morning on the tip of my tongue and um, that I don't always feel throughout the rest of the year. And yeah, it's just something remarkable about that. Yeah, I'm, I'm a little bit cautious about, you know, if that's not happening just during Holy Nights, it doesn't mean you missed it, you didn't do it the right way, you know? I mean, it's, it's really wonderful when that does happen. Mm -hmm. And even to, you know, this practice of regularly looking back at the life. I mean, this is a spiritual practice mm -hmm. to look back and to assess where am I in relationship to those things that I set out to do, those intentions that I set for myself. And it doesn't have to only happen at holy nights, Correct. but yeah. it can happen during the holy nights. And it's a, it's a little bit like bookkeeping. If I've done it throughout the year, then when I get to this time, I have easy access to those reflections. Mm. and can kind of turn the page into the new year in a very confident way. Mm -hmm. Even if there are things that are left unresolved or unfinished, but I, I have a handle on where I am in relationship to them. Mm -hmm. And then I also think, and this might be um, dipping more into the esoteric, but it's also interesting to think about the stories that surround the feminine in relationship to the holy night and this process of giving birth and how we have the three eves so we have christmas yes. eve we have new year's eve and then 12th night which you could say is the eve of epiphany and what is this kind of i think of it as an opportunity to go through like three stages of contemplation with with this so mm. eve Eve, the being that we read about in the Old Testament, who um, is very much associated with the fall of the human being from out of this kind of pure spiritual consciousness into awareness of the individual self and a physical body. So this fall, and this has certain consequences that result in the human being ultimately being able to receive the ego and the individuality, but that this, if this is a process of evolution that belongs to the human being with the earth. And then when we get to, so, and I think that the night before, so the 23rd of December, or maybe it's the 24th of December is the feast of Adam and Eve. And then at mm. midnight, we have the, the birth of the Christ child. And then on New Year's Eve, I, I think of this in relationship to when, when it's kind of looking at the, the whole year, and not in its, you know, one twelfth of the year, but the the whole year and potentially even the whole life, that this is connected then to this this mystery of Golgotha in this mm -hmm, moment mm -hmm. where something happens for all of humanity and all of earthly evolution, and then on the twelfth night, with this, then now what is this in my individual biography? So from this archetype of Eve, and through the the birth of the being that would go through the mystery of Golgotha and then mm. how do I come to this in my individuality mm. Eve, oh. Eve 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 <laughs> yeah that's beautiful I don't think I've fully uh 
Yeah. I don't think I've probably received that picture before. So thank you. Well, it's, as yeah. I said, it's a bit esoteric, but <laughs> trying to, you know, in addition to looking at my own life and looking at the cycle of the year and looking ahead to what's coming to kind of lift it into that, you know, a spiritual contemplation. So something that's beyond me, but also belongs to, I belong to this becoming. Yes. I can contribute to it the more I make myself aware of it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's just really building that, you know, this, like when you said earlier, you know, your spiritual research is so much to do with the events of your own life. And that, that could be, that it's not in any way a selfish statement or a navel gazing moment. It's, it's to really like pull forward all that you can glean and redeem and, and learn from the, this, what's kind of been given to you and what's transformed within you and as kind of a also a gift to humanity like what can you as an individual yeah. place you know yeah it's uh, it's always also to me it's interesting like you can so we have the the eightfold path that in his work Rudolf Steiner aligned to the planets in the days of the week mm -hmm. so that seems to be connected more to the holy week at easter time and the planets. But then he also took um, the virtues and aligned them to the months of the year. And so this then gives us more this experience of the stars and space. So this is the time of year for looking at the 12 fold nature right. or that, that, as, that aspect of the self that's being expressed through space or through the regions of the zodiac. Whereas at the Easter time, it's the rhythms of the planets. In a certain way, you could say that. But so one of the things that, that I've often done is to contemplate the virtues during the holy nights, but also yeah. as, a, as a way to set up, if I'm making a calendar or if I'm making a candle, that I might wrap the candle in something with a note to myself about the corresponding virtue. So that then when I'm unwrapping it in the future, you know, in the year to come, I'm, it's kind of like I'm dedicating it to that. So it, Pisces, magnanimity becomes love. So not that I only experience that when the sun is in Pisces, but that I make an intention to practice that at that time. Yeah. And this can really help to settle the chaos. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're also kind of leaving, you're leaving future gifts to yourself in a way too, it sounds like. <laughs> this thing I made for myself <laughs> yeah <laughs> so you know the the effort or the that will exercise to bring yourself to whatever you decide to do mm -hmm. um you know it has a resounding effect uh and I think it has this I, ability to also see oneself as one's own guide and teacher too it's it's, it's looking within to kind of access that that self-guide self-guidance yeah, yes, it's a beautiful way to say it. And it, it does require a certain amount of quiet to hear, to hear the self, to hear what's really trying to speak through. And so again, for me, uh, it, the sooner I can get my, my pieces together, get the space prepared, mm -hmm. make a commitment to say, at the end of each day, I will reflect on the year past, at the beginning of each morning each day I will anticipate the year ahead this is just the, the way I do it you know, yeah so this kind of dual thing going on and yes they belong to each other because they touch through me but my process might be different the way I reflect is going to be different than the way I anticipate mm, right ah uh, yes yeah so spirit recalling Definitely. And, you know, right looking forward it's like okay I'm I've, I've been asking myself this question, like what part of my nature is engaged when I'm looking ahead mm. as opposed to when I'm looking behind? And then, of course, wow. think of, of Urania. She's the goddess of, she's the muse of astronomy and she's the daughter of memory, Nemesine, the Titan goddess of memory. She's the mother of the muses. And of all of the muses, Urania, muse of astronomy, is the only one that can predict the future. 
Ah. So okay. it's like this really beautiful imagination, like, oh, by, by engaging with the stars, mm-hmm. I actually can have an experience of the future, which is completely different than what we hear from the world of astronomy, which is like, okay, the stars are so far away from us that the light, which is the, yeah, yeah, the light took so long to get here. Yeah. <laughs> the stars probably aren't even there. Like that's weird. right, right, right. So but here's bad. the news of astronomy, and with her connection to the stars, she's able to predict the future. Mm-hmm. And so mm-hmm. this is total, totally like reversal of what we think in contemporary culture in the exoteric science, mm-hmm. because it's really you know when we experience the stars, it, it affirms something in the in the moment. Yeah, that I think has to do with yes where we've been but also where we're going yeah I mean it even just earlier you were mentioning you know the sun rising east to west and then the earth moving yeah. west to east so even those two motions feel like you know this this looking back on the past and being pulled forward to the future we have these what is it called Con- it's not contradiction yeah <laughs> contradiction <laughs> well, I guess I guess to be like to be really explicit the earth is always turning west Mm -hmm. west to the east and so it doesn't just all of a sudden begin that motion but we get the sensation our experience outwardly in the world during the day is that the sun is moving from east to west and then when it sets i think it's not far-fetched to imagine that the light the outer light of the sun is setting in the west into my being and then i on the earth turning back to the east carry that light back to the dawn Mm. so as i'm in sleep or i'm in dream or i'm in the darkest time of the year i am actually carrying the light that illuminated the entire cycle of the day each month the entire year it sets into my being and then I work with it such that I can offer it up to the new year that's dawning. Mm. And we, we do this, you know, day by day and then mm-hmm. year by year. I, it's just, it's just beautiful rhythm. Mm. Yes. And, and oh, so beautiful, really. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. And I just feel like this time of year is this opportunity to really it, it's happening all the time these these processes but this is really an intentional almost you know ceremonial pers- like yes. time to really go into it yes and then and seed the year so yeah i think we really want to i think we've given some good pictures <laughs> of practices i, I hopefully I the oh, idea is God. that there's no right or wrong way mm-hmm. and but definitely working with the 12 foldness is a, is a powerful uh, yes. rhythm, is a kind of a guide that one could choose. And that's a personal yeah. choice in a way. I think it would all, it's also important to place in here this idea that each night when we go to sleep, we have an encounter with the guardian being of our life. And this is happening throughout the course of the year. But it seems to me during the holy nights that there's an increased, like, I, I like to imagine. But it's a it's a, um, a more pronounced meeting. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and then that, and, and then Rudolf Steiner speaks about how in the course of the year, it is during this time of the year that then, through the being of an archangel, we can have an encounter with the Christ. And so that's a deep mystery, and so preparing each night for the encounter with the angel. And then throughout this cycle of time, that sense of this mighty encounter that takes place. And then in this particular lecture, it's a human and cosmic metamorphosis. He goes on to describe how then it's as though this being of the Christ moves beside us and is with us from the Christmas time until Easter, and then seems to disappear Hmm. in our being. And One of the things that I think is really remarkable about this when looking outwardly then into the world of stars is that we see this pattern referred to as the winter hexagon that can also be drawn as a hexagram, the six pointed star. It rises up in the east in December in the Northern hemisphere. And then from December through March, it really dominates the sky as it's moving from rising in the east all the way across until it finally sets just as the spring is coming. 
and it's Orion, it's the bright star Sirius, you've got Capella, there's Procyon, which means before the shining one. And mm. there's these really lovely stars that create this pattern that kind of rise up. And when we think about the this statement by Rudolf Steiner that we can have this encounter with the Christ being and then that it moves with us through this mm. time from Christmas to Easter. And this star pattern is going overhead. Really, it's, you know, that which is uh, that I'm seeing without is intimately expressing something that is within. Mm. Wow. Yeah, so it's really good, I think, to get out and look at the stars as well. And you don't have to, you know, force, I got to identify all of them. It's not right. That. Right. No. Just being mm. with them. Yeah. What, what do I see? I'm looking this yeah. way because I have a window right here. <laughs> <laughs> Even though it's daytime. I feel like I keep looking off into the distance too, or we're just getting worse. The big flying stars are out there. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm. Mm. The winter hexagram you were just saying, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to look for that, yeah. Yeah, and so it's, so the stars that make it up, the, the brightest one is Sirius, which is the brightest star in our sky. Mm -hmm. And then it's Rigel, the left foot of Orion. So this place of steadfastness yeah then Aldebaran which is the bullseye in Taurus and then Capella um, which belongs to the charioteer and then it moves over to um, Pollux which is the immortal twin and then Procyon and, and Canis Minor which means before the shining one and then back to, to Sirius wow so it's yeah. the five point in it's six it's six oh points. six six okay yeah. Mm. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. It's a lot of mysteries, a lot of beauty. Yeah. Yeah. Very... The thing is to do something. Yeah. Something each day. And ideally at the same time each day, just to, to support the self and actually following through. Mm -hmm. Create the space ahead of time. Yeah. And to get the supplies together and yeah it it it, it the, the time itself isn't spent like just rushing around to get things it's like i've got all of that prepared and ready yeah with the in breath the and preparation then. does seem right yeah. yeah i think you asked me a few weeks ago what are you doing for the holy nights and that so i i took you know that question is is coming to me now i'm like okay i really really want to prepare ahead of time so i don't just start I, there are <laughs> some years that i thought to myself <laughs> really want to get ready for holy nights you begin in august like, mm. like thinking about what is it that that i'm going to do what do i want to bring right you know, it could be story like you mentioned there could be a particular story that you have every night yeah what i love about that is that a true fairy tale has so much substance for the soul so it's like nourishing and and, and bringing in that kind of really fertile energy that it's, it's just loading it in. I know, like mm -hmm. <laughs> gathering it in so that then when it's needed in the coming year, it's there. It's, you've been, you've cultivated in yourself. Yeah. And it seems like we're also talking about kind of nourishing your senses in a way too, like with color and story and looking yeah. at the stars and, you yeah. know, even just that seems to be a really, um, yeah, an important moment too to kind of nourish the full one's full self. Yes. You know, the different different layers of being human. So yeah. Yeah. And I, I know folks that will, you know, build a build a zodiac and put the planets in the places where they're like in the yard, like or in the snow, or make a labyrinth, or again, make calendars, make um roll candles, um, just journal, mm -hmm. paint. Mm -hmm. that anything that can just kind of quiet the outer distraction and bring a contemplative mood yeah mm. thank you so much mary this was so thank wonderful you. yeah i love to talk about this clearly <laughs> yes <laughs> yeah there's a lot of good practical and mystical elements here so yeah um thank you for sharing your wisdom and I look forward to seeing what this Holy Nights brings. Yeah, it's really Great. an honor yeah. to be able to share this experience. And I, I 
would be remiss if I didn't acknowledge all of the people that have shared all of their ideas with me along the way, such that I've been right. able to really, um, you know, there've been some remarkable experiences. And, I, and the main thing I think is just that feeling of, oh, I've given myself a gift. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that really came through. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, yeah, because there's so much, you know, focusing on on getting gifts or receiving gifts in a certain way, but really, you know, looking at oneself and and kind of the the gift of that one can give is also really beautiful. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Tess. All right. Thank you. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. <laughs>